My name is Jeff Irving, and this is the Brahode Tavern Podcast. I'm the creator of the Brahode Game System, and in this podcast, we're going to do a deep dive into the lore and gameplay of Brahode. I'm joined by Brandon Rollins, who will be acting as your stand-in, asking many of the questions you might be curious about yourself. Brandon, what's the topic for today? All right, so for today's topic, I was actually going to ask you about what you're doing to prepare for KublaCon in May and Origins in June. KublaCon, obviously first, uh, it's a it's a bit smaller convention, but we have a really large presence there. We've got an L-shaped booth right up front. Um, we're going to be running two demo types concurrently. We're going to be running on one table, we're going to be running Overland demo. And on the other, we're going to be running Underlands demos. We're going to be showcasing the new Table Tone, the Vrahode custom music and audio app that, that the folks from Table Tone are working on for us. It really adds a whole kind of another layer of immersion to the experience. And so we're excited because we just wrapped up some, as we talked about in the last podcast, we just wrapped up some good play testing to kind of seal the deal on Underland's exploration. And so we're ready. We feel like we're ready to demo that, maybe even with a little bit of Harbinger thrown in for good measure, you know, uh, just a couple, maybe a couple level dungeon, just to let people have a taste of what the Harbinger looks like on the table. Um, and, the, and that Table Tone app is just, I mean, we're just starting down the development road on Table Tone and customizing it to the Vrahod game series. So it's like, if you get the master all in uh, during the Kickstarter, you get, you know, you're going to get that Table Tone app with it. But um, like if you're in in the forest, you know, you've got this beautiful ambient noise going on. And then if you go into combat in the forest, you can add that to the soundstage. And I mean, it just, I don't know. I was really blown away by it. And like I said, we're just starting with them customizing it for, for us. And then if you, as you go through the series, you can purchase little packs, audio packs that plug on to this app. So like, you, you know, you've got the core box, which is a, a big one. And then you've got expansion one, which is a relatively smaller pack for the Vrahode app. And then expansion two is another big one because we have, you know, four new home villages that you can go visit because we've got new races of heroes joining the war. And so those home villages each has a unique music style that's associated with it. And then you go into the last expansion and it's a little bit smaller again, but each one of those packs plugs on to the, to the, to the core box and each one has a unique skin. So you see Vrahot art when you, when you, each expansion you, you know, you get, you get a new, you get a new skin um, to show that you're playing in expansion one or expansion two. And I mean, I, the part that I'm blown away is I've, I've messed with this app just a little bit and I'm not a big app guy. So, so app navigation and, and, and management is not something that comes naturally to me. I feel kind of awkward with it, but in the meeting I had with table tone just before this call, they were explaining to me how you can build custom scenes like before the game night. Like if you know you're going to play and you know that you're going <laughs> into a certain area of the world, you can basically kind of build custom scenes for the, for that night. I mean, I was like, what? So, oh yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so immersive, but anyway, so, so KublaCon, yeah. So KublaCon, we've got this huge L shaped booth. We're running concurrent demos. We're running the table tone, the Vrahode custom table tone music and sound app during the show. Um, we can't be super loud with it, but we're kind of away from everybody. So, you know, it's going to help make it a little easier to, um, to do that. Origins is a whole different animal. We just have a 10 booth. Um, as you know, Origins, Gen Con, all the big ones are really expensive to attend and to have a booth. So, but we do have our, our standard 2023 um, Weathervane Games and Vrahode booth. We're setting that up, one table. Um, we were going to be running 
um, demos in Hall C, which is um, another area. It's not in the exhibitors hall. And I, I wanted, I talked to um, the folks from Origins and I said, hey, I, I want to just run scheduled demos in our booth. And you can't do that. If you want to run scheduled events, you have to do it outside the exhibit hall. You have to do it in a play area. And so what we're going to do instead, we're going to run all of our demos in the booth and we're going to have a countdown clock. We're going to have a digital countdown clock. So like if we get a group of people that want a demo, we're going to start the countdown clock. And in two hours, we're going to start the next demo. And that way, people that come by the booth know when they can come back and, and do the next demo. But they also know they're going to get adequate time to play and really experience the game. And at Origins, because we only have a 10-foot booth, we're only going to have one demo table. So one day we will run Overland demos. The next day we will run Underlands demos. So like if you come one day and you want to do a, a demo one day, you can come back the next day and then see a completely different demo and experience a whole different group of mechanics for, for the game, which we have eight separate biomes in the game that play subtly different, but underlands is the most different of all of them and so you can you can you can play play a demo one day and probably experience a biome or two and then come back the next day and experience underlands guaranteed so that'll be i think i think it'll be fun that's going to give people a reason to visit the booth more than once um which at a place like origins i mean like if you can get even a handful of people coming back for more that's a really good sign the fact that you're sharing with ravenswood doesn't hurt either no, we'll have we'll have Rob and Jen from Ravenwood Woodworks there um, from Vancouver, Washington. Um, by then, we'll definitely have some Vrahode branded accessories to go with um, uh, everything else we're showcasing. Um, and I think I'm going to I'm hoping this is I'm not lying, but I think even though they may not have a whole lot of Vrahode branded stuff yet i think they might actually have some stuff to send to kubla khan with us as well even though they're not going to be there they're just going to ship it so i don't want to over promise and under deliver but i think we'll have some ravenwood stuff there we may have some like flyers and stickers to hand out from them but when you guys see this stuff whoo i mean it's above high quality it's cadillac i mean it's just cadillac yeah, like I, I can't wait to see it because I've, I've seen what they're capable of doing for non Verhood stuff and it's really, really good looking. Yeah, I mean, when you've got a, a dice tray that is some sort of strange exotic wood and it's got resin in it and it's live edge and, and I mean, it's it's all cut on a CNC machine, so it's perfect. I mean, it, it has a very unique, crisp well, it's basically what Wormwood is doing without the drama. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, it's like Wormwood quality. It's just you don't have the drama that goes on at Wormwood. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I didn't want to let this slip by. Like, you said you've got a good booth at um, KublaCon. You've got a comically good booth. Like, it is... I, I could not honestly imagine you having a better setup. L-shaped, like... As soon as you walk in, you're visible, and it's one of the largest ones there. That's just completely ridiculous. Everything about like it's a very favorable booth. Yeah, we're we're happy to be a, a little bit bigger fish in a little smaller pond uh, for mm -hmm. Kubla. I mean, I, I guess I could do a quick mention of the fact that we're going to be at Gen Con. It's not we're not going to have a booth. We're going to be in the first exposure playtest hall, um, and we have our events already filling up for that for people to demo Brahode um, at that in early August. So that'll be another fun experience. And it'll be, even though we don't have a booth, it's such a huge event that just being there is, is a big deal. And so hopefully um, we get some, uh, some of our friends in the Midwest to come and, uh, and play some Brahode with us. Yeah, and for that, I think just being able to talk to people and have conversations is probably going to help just because of how huge Gen Con is. And I know the rules on promotion are tight, but it's like, you know, people still go there to build the relationships that end up leading to bigger things later on. The convention prep, that's big news already, but you've got some other big news from relatively recently that I, I want to mention. Am I allowed to mention this? 
I guess I'll edit it out if not. Um, you just signed on with Mob Vanguard, which is like kind of a huge deal. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you, I, I wish I could take credit for, you know, the art direction and the game design facets um, as to why Mob Vanguard decided to sign us on for a five year contract, which is, by the way, longer than normal. Um, they normally do like a three or four year contract. I sent our writing, I sent our campaign book over, and that is the sole reason that Mob Vanguard wanted to work with us is because they loved our writing. And so, you know, we, we've talked a lot about the Harbinger. We've talked about our minis. We've talked about our dashboards. We've talked about all kinds of assets. Um, the thing that is yet to be drug kicking and screaming into the light has been all of the this voluminous writing that, that Sean Dressler and his partner have been doing. Um, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, I would put our writing for the Vrahod series up against any competitor, big or small. I mean, we, we've got really, really good writing. Yeah. And I mean, like Sean's been doing this for a while. He's got a bunch of books out. I, I mean, we had a, we had a handful of podcasts with them too. If anybody wants to go back and listen to those, I'll, um, I'll be sure to link them in here. It, it's good stuff. You know, it's good it, because just because he's, I mean, he's got his reps in when it comes to writing for sure. Yeah. But, but on the mob, on the mob Vanguard front, what does it mean? I mean, what is mob Vanguard and what, who cares, right? Why should anybody care? Well, mob Vanguard is a company um, out of Greece and their expertise is to seek out companies in other countries to create versions of Rahod in other languages. And so they, they, they'll go to partners in Germany and partners in France and wherever, Poland, wherever, Italy, and present our product to them. And if they show interest, then they can bring us um, contracts to work with, with those countries to do localized uh, copies in their languages. And so that, that is a, a way to seek new markets and to have a larger reach with our game. And we're really excited about it. Mm -hmm. And it just, not only that, but it also like these contracts, they, they actually inject money into the project early on, don't they? They can. Um, I mean, obviously you can't sell, um, you, you need to have a, a, a product that's very far along in order to have genuine interest and people willing to support you. Um, but we're, we're nearing that point. We're, we're at that point now where, um, the game is essentially done other than wrapping up the writing for the, um, the expansions and then the formatting of all the large documents. That's basically what's left. Everything else is just, um, is done. You know, we've got a lot of art that's done. We've got minis done, dashboards done. Um, some of the smaller documents done. It's just a matter of it's, it's a lot of writing, you know, to the tune of 500,000 words. That takes a while. Yeah, I think we're getting real close. Yeah, like most of the gameplay stuff is done. It's um, it's the quest books. They still need to, the campaign and quest books, those are still in progress. Um, and it's also the setup and rule guide, right? Setup and rule guide is at the point now where um, I made a, a, a pass through it just this last week and handed it over to Flo uh, to begin to format it. And so we're right there. Is it going to be done? No. Is it going to be polished enough for Tabletop Simulator and for people to review it and get a really good idea of our rule system? Absolutely. Um, it's just, it'll still be a work in progress that'll that'll deserve probably three more passes of proofing just to make sure we're happy with it. Um, but the nice thing about the setup and rule guide is it was, it was kind of distilled directly from the campaign book. And so having it to this point also lets you know where the rules are within the campaign book. Uh, so we're getting really close <laughs> and it's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that you pass this on to flow now, by the way, like just so everybody listening knows, like things are changing so quickly. I Like I keep it, I keep charge of a lot of the project management here and that's an update from the last few days. That's how quickly, that's how quickly things are moving along. It also means I need to get that spreadsheet updated as soon as we're off the <laughs> as soon as we're off the call. 
Absolutely. Also, I will let you know that I've already hired um, Gilherm Holtz and Gil- Gilherm Nakashima, uh, two Brazilians that have done a lot of work for us before on the project as card artists. They are back on the new cards. Uh, we talked in the last episode a little bit about um, some of the new cards that we introduced there at the end of playtesting. Uh, about a dozen or so new cards and they are they've already been commissioned to do the work they're start they've already started on them um i will also say that moreno Pison, who has done all of our village maps um, i just commissioned moreno and angela his girlfriend in italy to do a grouping or a lineup if you will of the four new four new races that are joining the, the war to save Vrahod, um, they're introduced in expansion too. So it's, that's a grouping of, of a Chorn, a Juern, a Sahrun, and a Greenling. So they're all standing there together looking like uh, soldiers getting ready to go off to war. And I just saw the, the first, uh, I saw the sketch of it today and was just blown away in fact i have i have a piece of art that's already been done for the game that is a larger lineup of heroes that i may actually have redone by moreno because i love his style so much i'm glad we got them back on the project because they're really good at what they do and plus you also get the benefit of having really consistent art too i think it's i think that's important i think we may actually do that because it just I don't know. This project is just too important to get everything right. You know, not that there's not other uses for that piece that we already have. There is, but you know, it's just too important to not to just nail it, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. so. Yeah. What else can we talk about, Brandon? Well, I I'm, I'm curious, like back to the subject of cons, what are you most looking forward to with these next two now that you've got a little con experience under your belt? Well, I think one thing that's going to be nice is although it's a little bit of a, of an ask for me to have my, my daughter Katie run demos. Um, she's going to have to, um, because at, Kubla, we have two tables and we're running concurrent demos. I can't run both. So I'm really looking forward to um, helping her kind of get into her rhythm of running demos for people. She knows the game. She's played the game a ton. She has kind of stepped in when I've had to go to the restroom or grab a bite to eat. But this will be her first time of actually kind of running the gauntlet of, of a full day of running demos. And I think she'll get really good really fast. Because that's usually the way things work. If you're forced to do something, the first time's a little nerve wracking, but then after that, you kind of start hitting your rhythm. Um, and I expect her to do a great job. Um, and then I, I think you know either Kristen or Ryan, our other two booth people, uh, which Kristen's my wife and Ryan is Katie's fiance. Um, one of them hopefully will be able to help us a little bit with the um, the audio app, so that like we can take it over here and let the overland people hear what's going on with it. And then we'll take it over here and we'll let the people that are doing the underlands demos kind of get a taste of it. And uh, so one of them will have to be a little bit of a floater. Now this will totally free you up to engage with media folks. Oh God, no, I'll be so busy because I have to run one of the demos. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Origins, origins is a different story. If everything okay. goes well, if everything goes well at Kubla, and there's not much media presence at Kubla. <laughs> um, it, it's much like Genghis. But, but at Origins, if I've done my job right at Kubla, then at Origins, yes, I can get freed up to be with the media and to, to hopefully do a lot more interviews, podcast stuff. And um, Katie, um, and, and maybe even with some help from Kristen or Ryan, they can run the demos and I can step away. Come to think of it, I think this is going to work out for you. Um, I'm glad you pointed that out because I was getting confused on the two origins. Of course, yeah, you you have to wander around because there's so much there. You want to go meet people yourself. Kubla, I actually think is going to be small and tight enough and your presence there big enough that you're actually going to pull people to you. So you won't even have to work as hard in that kind of situation. Yeah, I know I have. I know I have Logan, an interview with Logan Chops, who um, 
um, does game reviews and interviews and stuff. And we were supposed to do one back around Genghis time. And we just, he got busy. I got busy. And so he's going to be at Kubla. So, so me and Logan chops will be doing an interview there. Um, and then I know I've got some interviews starting for origins already. Um, so I'm just, I'm thrilled. I, yeah. If I can get freed up for origins, um, that'll be great. And then especially at Gen Con, see, cause at Gen Con, we only have that table in the playtest hall and I'm, I'm, uh, bringing a friend, uh, Rance, who's going to run demos for me there. And so at Genghis, or I mean, at Gen Con, I should be really freed up. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm glad you've got people who are able to run demos on your behalf, because if you had to solo this, that would be just ridiculously hard to do. It's a lot of work. I mean, I love it. I, I love I love it because I care so much about the product. It's just I start running out of voice. You know, my I, my voice starts going, especially on like day two and day three. I'm just I'm pretty shredded, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't blame you. It's a loud environment. You have to speak up in that, in that kind of situation. Yeah. You're going to have a ton of fun. I, I think, I think, I mean, like Kubla, people are going to be able to see social media, like pictures on social by the time this drops anyway. Um, you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to love that. You're going to be energized by that. Same thing with the origins. Um, I think that's going to work out really well for you. Yeah, I do too. And it'll be so fun to have Rob and Jen in the, in the booth with us as partners and you know their excitement to create accessories for our game system and our ability to show off the table tone app uh, and our partnership with table tone i mean it just goes to show you that if you're not greedy and you just really want to make the best products that you can um that a rising tide lifts all boats and that's that's been our attitude yeah it's been our attitude since the beginning is let's not be greedy you know um let's just try to to provide the best product we can. And if we feel like being part of this journey with us uh, helps partners, then let's do it. So with all this in mind, um, I know that you actually do have to start getting ready for the conventions very soon. I say, let's go ahead and call this one. And I'm going to come up with something interesting to discuss in the next podcast. Honestly, we might even, we might even get a fan on here. That would be cool. You know, I would love just that. have, yeah, I think we're about at that point, right? You know, we can probably hit up people on the Facebook group or discord and get somebody to join on. I, I think it'd be a neat way to get some, get some, um, new questions in there. Is there any way, Brandon, is there any way we could do a podcast, but also have it be connected somehow to a, a discord so that we could kind of field questions on the fly? I mean, we could, th we could theoretically do that. We could schedule an event, let people know, but I was actually thinking if you're going to do that, we might actually um, turn that into like a live stream event and have people um, send in their questions, have a moderator field them to you, which I could do and uh, work like that. I, I actually very recently did a, um, did a, did a webinar, a summit where that was how it worked. Like questions came in. And how go? I mean, was it? Oh, it went seamless. really well. We got tons of tons of engagement. As long as we just had the moderator there, it was fine. I mean, it was all on Zoom, like very, very cool. familiar, easy stuff. Yeah. Uh, I bet you Twitch and YouTube probably have better systems for that, though I haven't looked into them too much. Yeah, we could we could give it a try. I mean, I, I would love to get some fans on. So yeah, but a stepping stone. We'll just get a fan or two on here. That would be neat. I would love it. I've got a few people in mind um, that have been that have played the game and have interest. Mm -hmm. uh, at conventions um so yeah i definitely have a few few people in mind that i'd love to have on yeah so i think we'll do that next time great all right until then do you want to take us out sure thank you for listening to the bra Hood tavern podcast if you enjoyed this show take a moment to subscribe anywhere you get your podcast and if you're on apple podcasts please leave a five-star review it helps more than you know you can learn more about Brahode on brahode.com. That's V-R-A-H-O-D-E.com. Link in the show notes. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, where we are at Brahode. Thank you again for listening. We really appreciate it. Keep an eye out for our next episode in two weeks.